certain than me. So something kind of revealing um, was mentioned on Monday. This happened on Monday Night Smoke on the Undefeated Podcast channel, you know, where I do the breakdowns every Tuesday with Tony Pugilist Boy. If you haven't checked out our latest episode with Ziad Zizu Al Mayouf, definitely please do so. It was a very, very um, inspirational conversation and interview that we had with, uh, with Zizu. And yeah, please check it out. I'll leave the link to it below uh, in the uh, descriptions. But I was proceeding to give my take on the issues, obviously, between Ben Davison and um, Lee Wood with regards to the Mercy or Lara stoppage, whether it was premature or whatnot. Now, you guys know my thoughts if you watch the weekend wrap that I put up on Sunday. Quick summary, I felt that it was probably the right decision to stop the fight, but I thought the stoppage itself was a bad stoppage. Uh, basically meaning that there were six seconds left. The, you know, Lee Wood was lucid. Um, he was following commands. He was listening to instructions. Um, even though Mauricio Lau was right behind the ref, where he shouldn't have been, the ref himself would have or should have, if he was doing his job, eventually once he saw Lee Wood was fine to, fine to uh, compete or he felt that he was following instructions correctly, should have pushed Lee, uh, Mauricio Lara back into the corner so that he could then have, um, so he could then basically obviously come from the corner or been pushed back to basically come in and, you know, let off whatever sort he wanted to let off. By that time, the bell would have gone then you assess Lee Wood in the corner and you see if he's okay. If he's not, wave it off in the corner. No fuss, no muss. That's, that was my um, my potential. Or worst case scenario, if you actually thought he was that bad, you literally throw it, throw in the towel as soon as he's dropped and hit his head and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, irrelevant. Um, as I was giving my take on that, uh, Spencer Fearon, who's a good friend of the Unde uh, Undefeated podcast channel, Decided to call KG via telephone, you know, cut off my time, but it's fine. You know, as with the admin powers I have, I could have taken it back, but I chose not to disturb the show too much. It, it ran kind of long. But what Spencer did actually uh, mention on that day is the fact that he, whether he wants to take credit for this or not, was the cause of the beef between Richard Riakpour and Lawrence Okoli at the premiere of Creed 3. Now it's funny because Spencer was the same person in the middle <laughs> trying to break it up at the end. But he revealed that he spoke to um, Richard Riakpour. Richard Riakpour was just there. He was gonna go there, take some photos, show his face, and then he was gonna leave. He wasn't even gonna stay to watch the film. He, you know, he got his invite he's just going to do that show his show his face as an obligation and then bounce he didn't really want to stay spencer is the one that convinced him to stay which in and of itself is no problem but what spencer proceeded to say <laughs> is that he said to richard Riappour, you know you made the whole of south look bad on big old sky sports right and he was talking about basically um, with Lawrence Okoli quote unquote boying him on live TV talking about yeah call me out properly like say my name say that you want to fight me kind of thing and you know with Richards there being composed and measured and Spence was having a little he, Spence was having fun so to speak but we all know that sometimes certain jokes ain't funny to everybody so whereas Spencer thought this was a, you know, a fun, rapturous, laughing type moment, to Richard Riappour, this probably got in his head like, raw, oh, but you're trying to say that man didn't represent South in the correct way. And ultimately, regardless of how seasoned and composed you are, at times people know how to press your buttons. When it comes to, you know, area rivalry, especially when you're talking about, oh, you let this East man come and just chat to you like that, and rare, 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 like, it happens. This, these things happen. It's the same. It's the same everywhere. No matter whether you claim, quote unquote, claim it ends or not. Like if someone can always know the right way to to trigger a rivalry, especially when it's someone that you're not particularly that fond of to begin with. So overcomes Lawrence Okoli, you know, basically having a 
you know having his say trying to have banter when Richard is talking to Craig Richards or he's saying like yeah so so like what you're really saying or like so what are we doing are we doing this or not kind of thing and you've probably got Richard Riappo in his head right now oh, Spencer said I didn't even rep South correctly the last time this guy tried to put it on me so I can't do anything other than just while that all that's going through his head lost his composure lost his head then the two of them obviously done what they've done then you got spence in the middle trying to trying to break up and play hero when i heard that i said to myself that is <laughs> that has to be the funniest thing ever you are both the antagonist and protagonist of the of the story to begin with like <laughs> you were the hero and the villain of the same scenario but to be honest that's the kind of and that is the kind of guy Spencer is. You know when you, uh, this may not apply to everyone, but I'm hoping that some people get the get the gist of this. You know when you're that guy, that guy in school whereby he can go around and he can just get into everyone's head and he can create every type of beef, but ultimately he don't really want, he don't want it to go too far, but he can't control how far it goes. So he might say something because, oh, he thinks, oh yeah, but if I say to him that X, Y, and Z, oh but he's just gonna diss him then he'll diss him back and you could just have a fun little cussing match but then all of a sudden that cussing match gets a bit techy where maybe one person says something that's a bit hard to come back from all of a sudden you're squaring up to each other and then the guy in the middle is like rah, rah, rah. no chill that guys i didn't kind of want this i just i just wanted a bit of the fun like this is a bit too extreme that's exactly what it seems took place <laughs> and spencer definitely sees that kind of character to be honest I think KG is that kind of guy as well. He will stoke the fires and and set the beef, but then not expecting the beef to go too far. And when it does go too far, he's he oh okay guys, like I didn't really want this. This this wasn't this wasn't what I wanted. I just wanted a bit of a laugh. Now now people throwing hands and it's getting a bit dangerous. Um so yeah, that was very, very insightful. Um and even though I, you know, he <laughs> He did take over my time on that particular day. The fact that he dropped such a nugget, I feel like it was only right. I had to kind of give Spencer his segment on, on my particular channel. Whether he's going to see this or not is not important. Um, like he knows me, he knows who I am. So maybe he might, it might pass his guard and he may take an interest just because he knows the face. That being said, I just thought, yeah, I had to get that out there. Like Spence is, a villain and a hero of everyone's story <laughs> um there's been other instances even like he'll say oh i'm joking i'm joking but yeah i've noticed that the other person ain't taking it as a joke so we might have to we might have to work on the delivery of how these jokes come out spence because you you created all that warfare south versus east in central london when it didn't need to go that way but that being said at least it didn't go too far ultimately and i guess that's all we can really uh we can really say and you know praise that you know you didn't allow it to escalate so respect for that but change <laughs>